This part of the presentation covers section three, transportation network studies, dimensions, um, or sizes, or types, if you would call it. And I'll be starting off with transportation master plans, which are a um, high level, frequently updated uh, document or a study on uh, the jurisdiction's network, assessing and evaluating um, the transportation vision of the jurisdiction, current transportation system state from a vehicular uh, perspective, transit, as well as active modes such as cycling and walking, goods movement, safety, and others. The transportation master plan looks as well into the future transportation system needs. For instance, to um, identify those needs based on data that is collected as well as uh, macro level uh, analysis or assessment uh, or traffic assignment primarily that is taking place or that took place to reflect uh, the network's uh, future or anticipated future. For instance, to your uh, left, um, on the bottom side, you would see a uh, figure showing the travel patterns in and out of the central business district in Ottawa. That is extracted from Ottawa's TMP. The TMP also looks into the uh, future population patterns or growth, employment, um, and other uh, network uh, aspects as well. Through such analyses, the transportation master plan goes into identifying the system's performance, where there are gaps, identifies investment opportunities and timelines towards building a path to have a sustainable, cost-efficient future transportation network. For instance, the snapshots you can see on the screen are um, extracted from Ottawa's TMP. The first one describes the future transport, the transit network to your, uh, which is to your top left uh, corner. To the bottom left corner um, is showing the uh, different transportation improvements happening within the jurisdiction of Ottawa, but outside the Ottawa's uh, uh, borders or uh, jurisdiction limits. Um, on the other hand, to your right corner, uh, bottom corner, is the transportation improvements to the roadway network and the future ultimate horizon within the actual uh, city's uh, central um, district. Moving on to area structural plans, which are a very similar form of study, however, at a much uh, smaller scale, uh, scale or a scope. Uh, those typically happen uh, for developers or developments within a huge uh, size or land area, such as subdivisions. The study would look into the subdivisions, for instance, vision, land uses, population and employment attributes and constraints, such as green fields or protected areas, amenities, mobility and roadway network, as well as uh, utilities and so many others. Examples from uh, a Calgary area structural plan is shown um, to your left side, um, where the uh, ad subdivision is proposed at the north end of the city. few additional snapshots showing as well network connectivity with transit. Network connectivity from a transportation corridor perspective or roadway network perspective, as well as some statistics uh, that are being introduced to uh, the general community. Various structural plans as well handle and describe how the community or the proposed subdivision is going to be integrated in the nearby uh, communities as well as roadway network and infrastructure services that are offered by the city. Area structural plans are a very similar uh, scope kind of study uh, to area structural plans and uh, uh, transportation master plans. However, looking at the scope, the scope mainly covers a roadway segment or roadways segment. These uh, roadway functional plans focus on identifying existing and future level of operations. The needs for that roadway to function satisfactorily and efficiently as well as safely in the future. Those studies help allocate future funding and they look into as well the cost of implementing those improvements or any additional improvements that are suggested by the study or recommended by the study. To the bottom of your screen you'll be able to see an example from a, a snapshot from an Ottawa area uh, uh, roadway functional plan. To your right is an Edmonton uh, example as well. You can find links to uh, these and the 
uh, notes section of the slide if you are interested in further reading. Another example is that these studies do not necessarily just apply for roadways. They could apply, they as well cover intersections and, inter and interchanges. And an, another example from Rocky View County in Alberta is shown in the slide here, where the uh, traffic study is looking at the areas of improvements as well as the uh, intersection or the interchange performance once it's built and in the future. I'll be moving on to traffic management plans, ironically referred to as TMPs as well, not to be confused with transportation master plans. These are studies uh, typically performed with the intention of determining the procedure and protocols for site access and for traffic routing or uh, detouring due to temporary network conditions, such as construction work or events. Examples include mainly these. Depending on the impact of the traffic disruption, TMPs could as well be supported by some level of macro, meso, or micro analyses. If the traffic disruption is expected to be small in um, impact towards traffic and temporary, um, sometimes a traffic uh, analysis or performance uh, investigation is not required. However, the procedure is mainly looked into. An example from a previous uh, study that was performed by Stantec, showing construction zone is shown in this slide. The next slide is showing as well the areas where uh, flagmen uh, will be placed to be able to redirect and reroute traffic. And with that, I'll be moving with, to uh, traffic impact assessment or traffic impact studies. I'll be dwelling a little bit uh, on this section because uh, traffic impact assessments are mainly the bread and butter of transportation planning studies. These are small scale or a smaller scale uh, studies, very detailed micro level uh, to be able to assess the impact of traffic that is generated by a proposed development or redevelopment um, exercise happening in an area. These are required as part of the permits process and approval by the uh, approval authority or jurisdiction to be able to identify and understand the required network improvements as well as the cost implications of implementing those improvements. The study is usually initiated by the developer through a qualified transportation engineer and is reviewed by the jurisdiction. Typically, major jurisdictions have their own traffic impact assessment or traffic impact study guidelines, which as well highlight the uh, traffic study processes to be followed by the practitioner or professional who is performing the study, as well as the parameters that will be implemented in the traffic analysis software, such as Synchro, to be able to reflect local driving conditions. The examples shown here show um, that, that uh, an example from Mississauga's traffic impact study guidelines, Hamilton, um, Toronto would have its own as well. And um, showing another example as well from the city of Ottawa. And as you can see, I've taken a snapshot of uh, parameters or constraints that apply towards uh, the process of traffic impact studies, such as what's the maximum cycle length that you can implement. Uh, while looking at improvements or prior to looking at improvement and different other um, parameters such as peak hour factors, minimum fee settings, and so on and so forth. I'll be going over a little bit the process of a typical uh, traffic impact assessment. Um, the process doesn't have to be 100% the same for all of the traffic studies, uh, but generally more or less varies around this, the scope I'll be talking about or the process I'll be mentioning. So typically these studies uh, go through uh, the first step of uh, a scoping exercise where the transportation professional will be looking at how much of an extent of an area I'll be covering in my analyses, how many intersections am I adding, for instance. Am I looking at the traffic impact only at intersections, or am I looking as well into uh, parking? As well, parking studies could be a smaller portion of a traffic impact uh, assessment. 
and doesn't have to be a standalone document or study. Once that happens and the scope is agreed on, um, traffic data collection is initiated um, to be able to analyze and examine existing traffic conditions and um, transportation challenges, such as maybe um, high delays at intersections or extremely long queues at specific locations. Once that is performed, if there are any issues to be addressed through other mitiga through mitigation measures that could be suggested, the uh, professional would be applying those uh, mitigation measures and carry them forward with the analysis. Once that is performed, and through guidance from reference uh, documents, such as the Institute of Transportation Engineers Trip Generation Manual, the transportation professional would look into the type uh, of land use that is being proposed by the developer uh, and generate its uh, respective traffic or related traffic volumes using uh, the trip generation manual and assign them to the network. The assignment of traffic or the newly generated traffic over the network could happen uh, in various ways. For instance, uh, in the city of Ottawa, uh, the trans committee publishes uh, or have a published document showing household survey uh, patterns in and out from different zones in the city that could be used to assign traffic. For instance, 50% of my traffic is heading east. Uh, east. My east access is happening along Paladin Drive, for instance, in this specific case. Once the whole, uh, once that is performed, uh, the transportation professional would uh, be overlaying the uh, amount of traffic that is generated by the development onto the future traffic volumes expected at um, this study or in the surrounding transportation network. To find, of course, the background traffic, existing traffic volumes are typically grown using a historical growth rate um, that is reflecting the study or the traffic growth in the study area. Once the uh, post-development traffic is in place, which includes the development's expected traffic as well as the background traffic, the uh, analysis analysis is rerun again and uh, mitigation measures are looked into if needed based on uh, any traffic challenges or issues that are um, expected to happen using or based on the analysis. In some jurisdictions, such as the city of Ottawa, um, the level of service assessment or operational assessment is intended to cover and describe a multimodal perspective of the transportation network. And that includes investigating um, level of service for other modes of traffic, such as pedestrians, bicyclists, transits, and trucks, as well as vehicular level of service. In many jurisdictions, the main analysis happen covering uh, vehicular level of service, but there is recent direction in the industry to be moving towards a multimodal approach into looking at transportation network challenges, which helps us be able to quantify or have a preferred um, level of operation for one mode over, other, uh, over another different mode, or be able to know the impact of um, introducing improvements on a mode uh, of transportation, let's say vehicular mode, we're improving them. With that improvement, we may be deteriorating pedestrian level of service by increasing the distance they'll be walking, for instance, when we widen roadways and intersections. The traffic study uh, or impact assessment um, includes all the mitigation measures that are recommended by the transportation professional and is sent to the city uh, to review. Of course, the city of Ottawa's process is slightly different from what I described right now. The description I've uh, just given is a typical description for most jurisdictions. Uh, in jurisdictions such as the city of Ottawa, a, step, a stepwise process is being implemented into the process of TIAs that uh, is a five-step process that starts with uh, screening and ends all the way uh, with the uh, final document. If you're interested in further reading, a simply searching um, tra uh, Ottawa's traffic impact studies or assessment guidelines uh, will uh, get you the document and you'll be able to access and read through it. And with that, I'll be moving to parking studies, which uh, are a detailed assessment of the availability of parking. Uh, it's pretty much a demand over supply investigation. 
at uh, the most ba which has the most basic level of a parking study. The studies could be either initiated by the, juris the jurisdiction if uh, the parking supply in question or area in question is a public uh, parking supply, or alternatively could be a private developer. A good example of that is casinos, as for example they rely heavily on parking or other other as well establishments such as as well places of worship and others. Depending on the purpose of the study and the system's challenges, the scope of the study may vary and could include a 15-minute um, snapshot of looking at utilization rates, 30 minutes or hourly. Of course, the data collection exercise will have to reflect the same resolution. So if your study is reflecting 15-minute utilization rate, you will have to collect data every 15 minutes. Duration of stay analyses, which include uh, the length of stay of every single vehicle that is uh, using the parking area. These kind of studies are typically harder to, uh, or more challenging to uh, go with if uh, done manually. However, with technologies such as uh, license plate recognition systems, they make these uh, data much easier to uh, gather and evaluate. The studies look at different things, including enforcement, shared parking alternatives, and agreements, safety, wayfinding, and others based on the need um, of the study, or the extent of the problem, or complexity of it, actually. Parking management plans are a more comprehensive uh, level of parking assessment um, Open jurisdictions, parking inventory, and demand patterns. These are typically performed along very active corridors and study areas, such as a very highly active business district or retail area, for instance. The purpose of the study is to quantify the challenges in terms of parking, recommend feasible approaches from an infrastructure perspective, which is a supply perspective, from a technology perspective, from a policy perspective, in order to be able to mitigate parking challenges. The study could exp uh, explore um, existing and future parking demand, demand management and parking pricing, fair collection systems and enforcement strategies, as well as pu uh, public costs and revenue uh, allocation. These studies are mainly needed uh, most of the time along um, very active corridors where high turnover of traffic or parking is um, desirable for the benefit of the whole corridor or area. The examples shown to your right uh, are extracted from a Portland uh, parking management plan study uh, in Oregon, and the link is available to in the slide notes. The least form of um, scoping or a scoped traffic uh, study is uh, trap generation letters or traffic opinion letters. And these are typically acceptable as a substitute for um, traffic impact studies or assessments if the development is expected to generate a low traffic demand, which is not anticipated to impact the network negatively uh, or significantly. In many uh, jurisdictions, uh, if the development is expected to generate less than or fewer than 100 vehicle traps, uh, trip generation letter or traffic opinion letter may suffice. In the city of Ottawa, if the number is 60 person traps, then um, a trip generation letter or a traffic opinion letter suffices as well. There is quite a difference between uh, person traps and vehicle traps. Uh, vehicle traps are converted to person traps using the occupancy rate of uh, vehicles. If typically, for example, in Ottawa, if these uh, if the data is not available, the assumption uh, is carried forward with a, an occupancy rate of 1.2 uh, people per uh, vehicle or car. Uh, 